All right, so we've warmed ourselves up with positive definite matrices, how to find them in a groovy way. Uh, you may well be wondering, what is the point of these things? That's a fair question. Again, the monks have told us, right? It's a wax on, wax off situation. All is coming, All right? Okay, well, let's let's uh, let's produce some usefulness. Okay, so there are a couple of pieces coming. Uh, we're going to talk about ellipses and other functions, completing the square, and this thing called uh, Cholesky factorization. Which, well, I guess yeah. I mean, we've, we we we're slowly getting more factorizations. Um, there are many more more that come after all of these, but this is another nice little. Uh, one that's sort of in the in the category of LU factorization. Anyway, that's over the next few pieces. So here's the here's the big idea for this section is that we're going to re-express or just express polynomial functions using matrices, right? And of course, because we're in this game, we're going to be using PDMs, especially. PDMs, right? Positive definite matrices. Okay, excitement is building. So the key construct is this thing. Let me move this down a little bit. So it's, right, so it's here. It's this thing here, X transpose AX. Now this appears with some regularity. Oh, I wonder if that's true. Hmm. Okay, maybe that wasn't bright enough. Um, all right, so we do what we can. So this is, looks like this, A, M by N, and X. So what is this thing? This is a bit odd. M by 1, uh, 1 by N. All right, so that these match up, these match up, and a roll it is a 1 by 1. So this produces a scalar. This is just a scalar. There's a nice bit of symmetry, x transpose a x. Uh, and this is where a equals a transpose. Right. Doesn't have to be a PDM, but at all. But this is a, uh, an important thing. Okay, so here's a two by two example. <coughs> here's a equals a transpose. Right. Symmetry here. And let's just multiply this out and see what happens, right? So I'm going to get rid of this. Yeah. All right, so I'll multiply the, I'll keep this first vector here, x1, x2, this row vector, and then multiply the next pieces. So we'll have a times x1 plus b times x2, right? This is now a, right, so this is 1 by 2, this is a 2 by 2, a 2 by 1. So we're making a 2, we're making a vector actually. And then there's a bx1 plus cx2. So let's be clear about that. This is a 1 by 2. It can look a bit confusing when things are... And this is a 2 by 1. Right, it's actually... Right, so this is an inner product. Is what we're left with. So that's really what's happening back here, right? This is an inner product with some modification either of x or of x transpose. And here's an important thing. This is also equal to a transpose times x, which we know is, right, because we know all about transposes, which is in fact a times x transpose because of the symmetry. So you can either act the a on, you can act the a on either x. Beautiful thing. Okay, good. And then we're going to multiply all of this out. So we'll get x1 times this blob and then x2 times this blob. That makes sense. So this one times this and then this one times this. So we have, I'm just going to put that x, you know, collect things. So there's an ax1 squared plus b x1 x2, the excitement builds, and then there's plus b. I'll put x1 x2 and then plus c x2 squared. Join things up, we'll collect things. So we have 2b x1 x2 plus c x2 squared. 
Yeah, this is actually the useful version of linear algebra. Yep, interesting, right? But we prove everything. Okay, so uh, good. So this is a this is a standard polynomial, right? You might think of something times x squared plus something times x y plus something times y squared. Usually, how it's framed. Um, so we can we can make any polynomial by choosing a, b, and c. And there's a two in here, right? So we're going to split. We're going to split whatever this quantity is uh, into these two parts of the the matrix. So so the idea is so let's do this maybe. So we see that okay. So easy to go back this way. So I'm trying to show you what this construction does. But if you're given a polynomial, then we can write the x transpose a x portion, right? Okay, good. Okay, so let's try that. Okay, so what is this function? Let's say we've got this is some function, right? This is some function x1, x2, right? We put an x1 and x2, it gives us some value. Think of that as the height, right? So this is a height. So it could be, what could this thing be? It could actually, it's very simple, it's polynomials, um, all order two terms. So it could be a minimum, right? That it just grows as you move away from the origin. So we know that, um, sorry for moving this around. If you set x1, x2, that's not what I wanted. If you set uh, that x is to zero, then this is zero and you know, it may, it's it's definitely gonna be zero zero, and then you know something happens as you move away from that. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so it could be a minimum. That's what this is. It could be a maximum. Or it could be hilariously a saddle, right? So this will correspond to a minimum will correspond to positive eigenvalues, a maximum will correspond to negative eigenvalues, and a saddle will co correspond to one positive and one negative eigenvalue. So let's annotate this. So this will be um, lambda 1, lambda 2 are greater than 0. When we go back to A, this is lambda 1, lambda 2 are smaller than 0. And this is lambda 1, lambda 2 have different signs. Of course, now we can have x1, x2, x3, etc, etc, right? So you can have complicated saddles. Right, so it is not banana shaped, uh, unlike the Earth. Okay. Okay. So the story is that f has a minimum at x one, x two. If uh, if and only if a is a positive definite matrix. Nice. Um, hmm. So you could. Imagine this for many variables, etc., etc. We don't have to do calculus here. We just have to find pivots, which is strange, right? You could you could calculate a second derivative and see if it's positive, or you could do this. So why is that? Well, we know this this piece, as I said before, uh, that it's zero at x equals zero, and as x moves away from zero, so we we start at zero and then move x away then we can do this. We can write uh, x as a sum. Right? Instead of using the normal standard basis, we write it in the eigenvector basis. Right? So this is the e vector basis, a's e vector basis. And this is very important. This is possible right? because the eigenvectors, because a equals a transpose, the eigenvectors form an orthogonal or orthonormal basis, you know, I'm going to write that. I mean, it's orthogonal, that's true, but we're kind of working on orthonormal yeah, right? Always possible. So it's a basis, it's even better, it's orthonormal, that's optional, but it is a basis. So we can always write x like this, and if that's true, then we can stick all of this into here. So this is a funny thing. So we're going to rewrite x and then we're going to push it into here in this 
uh, x transpose ax structure. All right, so again, we've got f. We want to know if f increases as we move away from zero, which showing that that is true if the x transpose a x version of f, is, okay, the a in there is a positive definite matrix. All right, so this is going to be sum. The sum, we're just sticking this in, i equals 1 to n, there's some values. Yep, and then same over here. Um, I'm going to write, I'm going to use a different subscript if that's an issue. j equals 1, cj, vj, right? So we've got that. And so we can operate the a on this piece, right? So we're going to take that in there. And this is still the same at the front. Then there's this piece, j equals 1 to n. And now we've got cj, that's c, sorry, cj, that's just a constant. Yep. And then we've got a times the jth eigenvector. Good. We're just multiplying through. And so these ones, all of this, right, a times an eigenvector, it's just lambda j times vj. All right, we should concentrate a little bit here. And now I'm going to pull the, the sums out. i equals 1 to n, and there's also the sum. That these things don't hurt each other. j equals 1 to n. We're going to have a ci, cj, uh, and now we've got this v, I've, I've left my, there should be a transpose here, transpose here, vi transpose vj, like this, right, so these are all inner products, these are 1 if i equals j, right, so 1 if i equals j, 0 otherwise, Good. And so every one of the sums drops out, if you like, and we'll just have sum from i equals 1 to n ci squared. And yeah, that's it. Okay. Um, and I've lost the lambdas. They should be here. Lambda is a lambda j. And I'm going to put it here. I found them in a box. Lambda i c i squared so this is always positive greater than zero just constants so this is greater than zero right for all uh, for all of these possible ci's and therefore all x's if and only if um, all lambda i are greater than zero Okay, so this leads us to um, a another, defi another definition, which is to say that, uh, uh, let me put it, uh, yeah, I'm going to put it down here. <clears throat> yeah, so we can do this. So, uh, so uh, this is a sort of a, a deeper definition, maybe. I'll just put alternate definition. And, you know, you might want to start from this. It implies the other pieces. Uh, so A equals A transpose is positive definite if and only if X transpose A times X is greater than zero for all x not equal to zero. Okay. And it's semi-positive definite if it's greater than or equal to zero. So this is a, just a little piece I want to put down here. <coughs> Did not work, fail. Okay. Still not happy with that. Usually works. Good. 
Okay, so that's just, a, I'm just gonna hide that down here. Okay, so let's work on two examples here. You know, you're asked, here's a, here's a um, function, this guy here, for example, right? Does this have a max, min, or saddle? And, and really it's about the, um, the signs of the eigenvalues, right? Okay. Which we now know uh, match up with the signs of the pivots. Okay, so that's what this is. Yes. Um, actually, let me get the question right. So it does have a maximum to match up with that answer. Does it have a maximum? Funny, funny answer, funny question, I guess. Yes, and then, so that's true if, if, if only if both the eigenvalues are positive and both the pivots are positive. So you construct this X transpose AX structure and we're going to rewrite it. So this was the original one we're given, right? Here it is. And what we do is, so let me try to get this right. So this two will go here. This two will go here. You can think about the calculation we did on the previous page. And then this minus one is divided into two pieces. Minus one, minus one. Let me give that a different color. And so three by threes will have a, right, so split evenly. So three by threes will do the same sort of thing. The x1 squared, the x2 squared, the x3 squared, they'll be down the diagonal. Then the x1, x2 terms and the x2, x3 terms and the x1, x3 terms will be split across because we, we want to make um, a symmetric matrix because it has all these special properties. This is actually A1, right, from before. And we knew what the pivots were. They were determined. So uh, the pivots are D, uh, two and three halves, which means that um, the you know, lambda one is greater than zero, lambda two is greater than zero. We don't know what they are, which means F um, has a minimum. It grows as it moves away. Not a minimum, a minimum, mm, mm, a chrysanthemum. Okay. <clears throat> hmm. All right. Then, this is one slight change, it's just here, minus sign. Again, construct x transpose ax. So we'll do the same thing. I want to bring the pieces in, so this 2 goes into here. This minus 2 goes into here. And then we'll split this minus 2 here. So minus 1 goes here, and minus 1 goes here. This is A2 from before. And we'd already established that these were the pivots. Right. So this implies that the pivot, so the first pivot, so we'll say lambda one is greater than zero, lambda two is smaller than zero. So that's a saddle. Right, good. Okay, so that is the plan. Uh, we've got this extra little definition down here. Right. But I'm just gonna color in for fun. We're just coloring things in there. But th so this is a hopefully an interesting thing. Uh, you can, yeah, take something that seems to have no matrices whatsoever, turn it into a matrix equation, and then use all this um, kind of Goodness, and we're going to do that again in the um, next uh, next couple of pieces. Right, I know it's exciting, so exciting. <laughs>